I'm Brittany Lewis with Forbes Breaking News. Last week, the House Judiciary Committee held a marathon hearing on an assault weapons gun control bill. Texas Republican Chip Roy proposed an amendment Democrats objected to. Roy's amendment would have exempted victims of human trafficking from the banning of the weapons in question. Democrats, including Chairman Jerry Nadler and Roy's fellow Texas Representative Sheila Jackson Lee, pushed back on the proposal, going so far as to accuse Republican members of hypocrisy. Watch the full debate now. For what purpose does the gentleman from Texas seek recognition? I'm going to remember the desk. Mr. Chairman, I reserve a point of order. The uh, clerk will report the amendment. Point of order is reserved. Amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute to H.R. 1808 offered by Mr. Roy of Texas, page 18, line 12. Without objection, the amendment will be considered as read, and the gentleman will be recognized for five minutes to explain his amendment. Thank you, Chairman. Um, similar to the amendment offered by my friend from Kentucky, Mr. Massey, uh, and in the spirit of the amendment offered earlier, uh, that I offered earlier with respect to American citizens who live um, close to the border, which is wide open and dangerous. People who live in cities who have had police defunded and now have crime increasing and they're thus imperiled and in danger. Mr. Massey's amendment to allow. Um, Mr. Chairman, we might have order. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, you'd have order. Committee will be in order. Um, Mr. Massey's amendment, which would offer uh, an exemption for uh, victims of domestic abuse. We had some others. Uh, this amendment, which I had crafted uh, before knowing all the list of amendments, um, sought to provide an exception for those who are victims of human trafficking. It would exempt individuals who have been or is a victim of human trafficking. In Texas alone, depending on which organizations you talk to, the estimates vary quite significantly. Um, from 79,000 victims of youth and minor sex trafficking at any given time, 313,000 victims of trafficking in general, um, results in about $150 billion per year in profits. And it is an entire industry uh, built around the oppression of mostly women, but people generally, um, and not just sex trafficking, but trafficking for purposes of essentially modern day slavery. Um, and it is driven by a massive, powerful, organized criminal infrastructure connected to cartels, of course, in Mexico heavily, but uh, throughout the Western Hemisphere, but in particular with tentacles reaching into, now increasingly proven into operations into the United States in coordination with criminal activity and organized crime in the United States for profit, uh, moving human beings for profit. Um, these are some of the more dangerous uh, entities in the United States, organized crime, along the lines of the mafia that Bobby Kennedy targeted uh, with the support, obviously, of his brother, President Kennedy. Uh, and I think we have bipartisan agreement that we need to target that uh, scourge uh, against, again, heavily females, but, but um, both males and females that are subjected to both sex trafficking and human trafficking. And, and essentially modern, modern day slave labor. Um, again, we've talked about ad nauseum the uh, effectiveness of the weapons being targeted by my colleagues on the other side of the aisle. And in fact, it seems to be central to the thesis for the purpose of the banning of the weapons that they are in fact effective. Indeed, one of my colleagues on the other side of the aisle referenced the extent to which they are designed to kill people. That is, of course, what they are designed to do. That is true. They are designed to kill. They are designed to kill animals. They are designed to kill people. Um, that, is, that is why that weapon or these weapons are designed along with all firearms, right? It's the uh, crux of the safety that those of us that raise our children around firearms teach them. Uh, my son, who is here, um, teaching them that any weapon is loaded. Uh, and that you only point it at something that you intend to destroy or to kill. That's what we teach. Um, that this whip weapon is in fact effective is the reason, as Mr. Massey pointed out, and as Mr. Biggs pointed out with respect to his wife, um, and, and again, I might, you might have the opportunity to correct the record about the way he described that himself, um, but 
uh, that that weapon is effective for defense for those individuals. And I, and I am suggesting here that there are an enormous number of individuals who are under the thumb of dangerous criminal organizations who are using them for profit and who are terrorizing and terrifying them and their families for whom the, as defined by my colleagues, most effective weapon uh, that you can have on the market would be useful for them in defense against well-organized and well-armed criminal elements that are tied between the cartels and organized crime in America. So that if you are in fact a victim of human trafficking, you would have the ability to have a weapon that would at least match the ability and match the uh, armaments that are currently being utilized by that organized criminal element against them in putting them into what is modern day slavery in the United States. And with that, I would yield back to the chairman. Gentleman yields back. I recognize myself in opposition to the amendment. I'll be very brief. Um, the human trafficking is a very serious uh, problem, and that's why we've moved uh, legislation against it. Um, but the introduction of uh, firearms into the human trafficking will just make it uh, uh, much worse and will decrease the safety of the human, of the person being trafficked, exactly uh, our opposition to the prior two amendments. So I, I oppose the amendment. It will make uh, victims of human trafficking much less safe. Uh, and I yield back. Mr. Chairman? Well, I'll yield to the gentleman from, yeah. do you want to strike the last word? Uh, yield back. For what purpose does the gentleman from Rhode Island seek Move to strike the last word. The gentleman is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, too, uh, agree with your analysis that injecting military-style assault rifles or assault weapons into the horrific practice of human trafficking will, in fact, uh, make it less safe for those who are trying to uh, protect from human trafficking. And I applaud both this committee and the Foreign Affairs Committee for the work we're doing, and obviously more work needs to be done. But I'd like to use my five minutes to, to introduce a series of documents in the record which I'd like to describe and ask at the conclusion for unanimous consent. Um, the first is I want to just acknowledge that we have a colleague uh, who has recently been the victim of the threat of gun violence uh, at her home. And I, I would like to introduce into the record this article, Man Who Allegedly Threatened to Kill U.S. Representative Pramila Jayapal, released from jail, which recounts a horrific event at the home of one of our colleagues just recently uh, involving a gun, just to show how real this is uh, every day for people all across this country, including uh, our colleagues. And I want to introduce that. Without into objection. And then, Mr. Chairman, I have a series of documents that I'd like to just briefly explain before I introduce. The first is a, uh, an article from the Washington Post, February 15th, 2018, entitled, It's Time to Bring Back the Assault Weapons Ban gun violent experts say, and they recount in there um, the, the arguments of the necessity of the bill before us. The second is an article entitled The Assault Weapons Ban. It really did work. This is from the New York Times, dated uh, September 4th, 2019. Um, and they do a thorough analysis uh, of the assault weapons ban and say, in the decade after the ban, there was a 347% increase in fatalities in gun massacres, even as overall violent crime continued downward um, after the expiration of the assault weapons ban. The third document is a document from the Washington Post entitled, It's Time to Bring Back the Assault Weapons Ban, uh, dated again uh, February 15, 2018. The next article is an article from USA Today, in t uh, which headlines, More Mass Shooters Are Using Semi-Automatic Rifles, Often Bought Legally. And in that article, they write, AR-15 style semi-automatic rifles or similar guns were used in at least six of the 14 mass shootings this year in which four or more victims died, according to the Gun Violence Archive. In eight of those shootings, information was unavailable about the types of the guns. Most guns used in mass shootings include those owned by the Highland Park suspect were illegally obtained. The next article is an article entitled, Assault Weapon Ban Significantly Reduces Mass Shooting. This details a Northwestern medical study in 2021. That study found that the federal assault weapons ban that included ban on large capacity magazines from 1994 to 2004 resulted in a significant decrease in public mass shootings, number of gun deaths, and number of gun injuries. I next like to introduce a document 
uh, from the Department of Transportation. This is a study on the suitability of modified semi-automatic semi assault rifles dated April 1998, in which they conclude that military-style rifles with large capacity magazines do not serve a sporting purpose and should not be importable as sporting rifles. Uh, I next have a document from the Stanford Law School entitled The Assault Weapon Ban Saved Lives. And it concludes the body count from gun massacres was visibly restrained during the assault weapons ban and rose sharply after 2004 when it expired. The next document I'd ask for introduction is a report entitled Reducing Firearm Injuries and Deaths in the United States, a position paper from the American College of Physicians. In that report, uh, they conclude, um, although evidence on the effectiveness of the federal assault women of 1994 is limited, the college believes there is enough evidence to warrant appropriate legislation and regulation to limit future sales and possession of firearms that are features designed to increase their rapidly killing capacity and can, along with a ban on large capacity magazines and bump stocks, be effective in reducing casualties in mass shooting situations. And finally, a, a report uh, entitled Changes in U.S. Mass Shooting Deaths Associated with the 1994-2004 Federal Assault Weapons Ban Analysis of Open Source Data, which again concludes uh, there was a dramatic reduction in shootings and death once the ban was in effect. Um, another report from the American Journal of Surgery entitled The Sustained Effect of a Temporary Measure, Urban Firearm Mortality Following Expiration of the Federal Assault Weapons Ban. And um, Mr. Chairman, each of the, so I'd ask you now, because that all those documents be admitted to the record. Without objection. And I'll uh, comment on that at a later point, but I thank you, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Gentleman yields back. Who seeks recognition? What purpose does Mr. Bishop seek recognition? I'll speak on the amendment. Hmm? I'll speak on the amendment. The gentleman is recognized. I thank the chairman. And I, um, you know, there's a, fortunately, um, this has come on so quickly, it's kind of hard to put together your constitutional analysis fast enough to bring all the questions to bear, but somebody else shot something to me that's worth noting. Uh, when the Supreme Court decided Bruin last month, I guess it was last month, right, Chip? Um, it also had pending uh, petitions for certiorari in other uh, gun cases, including uh, assault weapons bans. And it did what's called GVR those cases. It granted the uh, petition for certiorari, vacated the order from the court below, and remanded. Um, and sent it back to those courts to consider it again. And um, as uh, the a Bloomberg art article dated June 30, 2022, says the justices didn't explain why they sent the cases back, but presumably it was to apply the new test laid out by Justice Clarence Thomas's majority opinion in New York State Pistol Association versus Br Bruin. The ruling was the first, Supreme Court's first major Second Amendment case in over a decade and limited the restrictions that states can place on where gun owners can take their firearms. Um, and um, it, uh, so, so, so it, you, you got, it sort of points me back to something I said also earlier in the day, which is uh, when I made reference to massive resistance. Uh, so what we have, th this would be akin to after the Supreme Court decided Obergefell, if Congress had passed a b new ban on same-sex marriage immediately following that. It, it flouts the uh, decision of the Supreme Court um, and just for the sake of having sort of covered it, because this is what, I mean, it, Democrats um, have been um, virtually unwilling to acknowledge it. Yes, sir, I yield for a second. No, 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 you, you, you passed a, 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 not a ban on same-sex marriage, you passed the opposite. And that, that's the, uh, but uh, Massive resistance, uh, Wikipedia's entry on it, massive, massive resistance was a strategy declared by Democrat U.S. Senator Harry F. Byrd Sr. of Virginia and his brother-in-law James M. Thompson, who represented Alexandria and the Virginia General Assembly, to get the state's white politicians to pass laws and policies to prevent public school desegregation, particularly after Brown versus Board of Education Supreme Court decision in 1954. What this reflects, you've got so, so you've got the Supreme Court has, has uh, said the decisions have to be reconsidered below, including in uh, uh, 
this would be uh, uh, cases sent back Thursday include challenges to bans in New Jersey and California, California on high capacity magazines that hold 10 rounds or more, Maryland's assault weapons ban, and Hawaii's restrictions on open carry. So those have to go back to those lower courts to identify what historical analog they rely upon that is equivalent to what's been done here. Uh, and uh, the, before those cases are decided again below, the Democrats want to rush a, an assault weapons ban or a, weapon, a ban on, on uh, sport rifles uh, and other certain weapons that look scary through this committee. Um, I just think it's very telling and, uh, and a further reason why the amendment to me makes, uh, makes perfect sense. Uh, and with that, I look around. Who wants the time? Nobody? And I yield back. Gentleman yields back for purposes. Gentle lady from Florida, see Greg, from Texas, see Greg Nation. Florida is a beautiful state, and I'm very proud to be from Texas, Mr. Chairman. Thank you so very much for yielding to me. I'm going to take a moment. Okay, um, I am going to take a moment to cite from an article where AR-15 style rifles fit in America's tragic history of mass shootings. And just take a moment to cite from this article written by uh, Jonathan Franklin. Uh, first of all, the article notes that AR-15 style semiotic weapons, semi-automatic weapons are a civilian version of military weapons that gun uh, uh, advocates who believe in gun regulation um, say uh, aren't very different. The AR-15, like its military version, is designed to kill people quickly in large numbers, hence the term assault-style rifle. Gun control advocates uh, told um, uh, the National Public Radio. The gun industry, gun owners, and their supporters, on the other hand, say AR-15s are used for hunting, target practice, and shooting competitions. But the AR-15 was called America's Rifle in a January 26 blog from the National Rifle Association. So everything that the NRA wants uh, to do uh, is to, in essence, glorify these assault weapons. <laughs> and of course, we now have an amendment before us uh, dealing with the issue of human trafficking. Just about a week or so, we passed the human trafficking, but even before that, we had a human trafficking hearing. The victims that came forward, as I recall the testimony, that one single person, victim of human trafficking, uh, Courtney was her first name, advocates of, uh, when I say victim, advocates of eliminating human trafficking, likewise, uh, were nowhere expressing their uh, champion, if you will, of the idea of getting um, human trafficking hands on an AR-15 assault style weapon. I'd raise the question to the proponent or anyone uh, whether or not they are in support of decriminalizing uh, victims of human trafficking, uh, such as individuals who um, unfortunately wind up uh, in jail, uh, in prison, for killing their traffickers. Tragic situation, but that has occurred. And anyone, anyone will join in decriminalizing uh, the acts because they are victims of human trafficking. Of course not. Uh, this is, again, an attempt uh, to distract, uh, an attempt to um, uh, move on issues that are completely irrelevant uh, to the discussion at hand. And that is, as our police officers have said, a domestic violence incident uh, with an AR-15 and the officer comes uh, to rescue the people, that officer armed uh, is in fact in jeopardy of losing his or her life. Uh, this is about manufacturing uh, and producing more weapons to make more money. I also heard the gentleman uh, mention the question of uh, the right to marry, marriage equality. Uh, yesterday we had the Protect Marriage Act, led by our chairman, and Mr. Cicilline. And I believe that uh, one of the gentlemen who mentioned the issue voted no. This is the hypocrisy uh, that um, we have in this room today. 
We have the complete ignoring of the Constitution, the Declaration of Independence that was cited by one of my colleagues before, that we have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That is not going to happen with the proliferation of assault weapons or weapons of war, assault-style weapons. That is not going to happen for little children who, as I talk to my school superintendents, that they are completely in a panic about going back to school in the fall of 2022. Children themselves are frightened. Parents themselves are frightened. And we have absolutely no response. We need to hurry and pass this legislation now to stop the bleeding and to stop having the stories of a child that bled out or another child that smeared herself with blood, both incidences and tragedies in Uvalde, so that she could play dead and this vicious, vile perpetrator would not kill her. I don't know how much more of these kinds of amendments, it certainly is a privilege of the minority to do so, uh, but I would make the argument uh, that this um, effort uh, is nothing uh, but a ruse. Uh, by the way, uh, there is sufficient money put into uh, the Safer Communities Act, uh, 500 million. Yeah, time of the gentle lady, the time the gentle lady has I, the time I asked the gentle lady has to expired. To oppose the amendment, I call the question. The time of the gentle lady has expired. Does anyone else seek recognition? If not, the question occurs on the amendment. All those in favor will say aye. Opposed, nay. Nay. In the opinion of the chair, the nay is habit. Recorded vote is requested. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Nadler. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Nadler. No. Mr. Nadler votes no. Ms. Lofgren. Ms. Jackson Lee. How are you? No. Ms. Jackson Lee votes no. So we have a Mr. Cohen. No. Mr. Cohen votes no. Mr. Johnson of Georgia. Mr. Deutsch. Mr. Deutsch votes no. Mr. Chairman. Ms. Bass. Mr. Chairman. Ms. Lofgren. Mr. Chairman. Ms. Lofgren. Let's move a little bit over here. Clerk will continue. Ms. Bass. Mr. Jeffries. Oh. Mr. Chairman. Jeffries votes no. Mr. Jeffries. How am I no. recorded? Uh, Ms. Lofgren, you are not recorded. Good, we'll continue. Mr. Chairman, how am I recorded? Congressman Issa. Mr. Cicilline. No. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Cicilline votes no. Mr. Swalwell. Mr. Mr. Chairman, Lou. how am I recorded? Well, they were asking. Okay. Mr. Liu. Mr. Raskin. Ms. Jayapal. Ms. Dimmings. Dimmings votes no. Ms. Dimmings votes no. Mr. Correa. Ms. Scanlon. No. Ms. Scanlon votes no. Ms. Garcia. No. Ms. Garcia votes no. Mr. Nagus. No. Mr. Nagus votes no. Ms. McBath. Ms. McBath votes no. Mr. Stanton. No. Mr. Stanton votes no. Ms. Dean. No. Ms. Dean votes no. Ms. Escobar. No. 
Ms. Escobar votes no. Mr. Jones? No. Mr. Jones votes no. Ms. Ross? Ross votes no. Ms. Ross votes no. Ms. Bush? Bush votes no. Ms. Bush votes no. Mr. Jordan? Mr. Jordan votes yes. Mr. Shabbat? Aye. Mr. Shabbat votes aye. Mr. Gomert? Aye. Mr. Gomert votes aye. Mr. Isa? Aye. Mr. Isa votes aye. Mr. Buck? Aye. Mr. Buck votes aye. Mr. Gates? Aye. Mr. Gates votes aye. Mr. Johnson of Louisiana? Mr. Johnson of Louisiana votes aye. Mr. Biggs? Aye. Mr. Biggs votes aye. Mr. McClintock? Aye. Mr. McClintock votes aye. Mr. Stubbe? Yes. Mr. Stubbe votes yes. Mr. Tiffany? Aye. Mr. Tiffany votes aye. Mr. Massey? Aye. Mr. Massey votes aye. Mr. Roy? Mr. Roy votes aye. Mr. Bishop? Mr. Bishop votes aye. Ms. Fishbach? Aye. Ms. Fishbach votes aye. Ms. Sparts? Mr. Fitzgerald? Mr. Fitzgerald votes aye. Mr. Benz? Mr. Benz votes aye. Mr. Owens? Mr. Owens votes aye. Is left House Swallow recorded? Mr. Swallow, you are not recorded. No. Mr. Swallow votes no. I was Lofgren recorded. Ms. Lofgren, you are not recorded. I vote no. Ms. Lofgren, I was votes Raskin, no. I was Johnson I was recorded. Mr. Johnson of Georgia, you are not recorded. Vote no. Mr. Johnson of Georgia votes no. Mr. Raskin? I vote no. Mr. Raskin votes no. Ms. Jayapal? Ms. Jayapal votes no. Mr. Liu? No. Mr. Liu votes no. Clerk of report. Mr. Chairman, there are 18 ayes and 23 noes. The amendment is not agreed to. Are there any further amendments?